In February, the Air and Space Forces announced two dozen service-wide changes at the AFA Warfare Symposium, something we reported on in previous episodes of Weapons and Warfare. One of those changes we haven't explored yet is the Air Force's decision to bring back the warrant officer ranks. The decision is motivated by Russia, China, and the ever-growing battle space behind keyboards and computer screens. The rank of warrant officer can be traced back to medieval England, eventually finding its way into the Royal Navy in the 1500s. It was a way to recognize soldiers or sailors with extensive experience and seniority, meaning it was earned by warrant rather than commission, placing the recipient between the commissioned officer ranks and the non-commissioned officer ranks. The practice would find its way into the American military as well, where it still exists today except for the Air Force, which phased out the rank in the late 1950s. The last active duty Air Force warrant officer retired in 1980. 44 years later, what's old is new again. We're gonna engage in developing a warrant officer program, specifically for cyber and IT professionals to be able to ensure that we have that technical talent now and into the future. For Air Force leadership, it's about attracting people with specialized skills who want to serve, but previously had it considered doing so. There's something specific about this career field, why it's attractive and it's a nice match for a warrant officer program. The pace of change of the cyber world, the coding world, the software world, it is so rapidly advancing. We need those airmen to be on the cutting edge and stay on the cutting edge. So we're gonna pursue that, all those in the area of developing our people. To put it simply, what used to be an arms race is now a cyber sprint an all-out effort to stay on the cutting edge of a battle space that will be played out in a series of zeros and ones. Both China and Russia are actively developing and fielding more advanced capabilities designed to defeat U.S. power projection. The need for modernization against capable, well-resourced strategic adversaries never stops. It's a threat that occupies the thoughts of Americans in uniform and out. After a nationwide outage of AT&T services, Florida Senator Marco Rubio posted, I don't know the cause of the AT&T outage, but I do know it will be 100 times worse when China launches a cyber attack on America on the eve of a Taiwan invasion. And it won't be just cell service they hit. It will be your power, your water, and your bank. For those responsible, the effort to make sure that doesn't happen never stops. And as the threats from countries with vast resources continue to grow, so too is the way the Air Force sees its own future. It gets back to how do we maintain our competitive advantage? Today's airmen and guardians want different pathways to serve. And, and, and we are in a organization that we've got to keep some of our technical expertise, deep technical expertise, and that's all we need them to focus on. While it's not immediately clear when this reintroduction will happen, what is clear is the Air Force's motivation behind the move. And where we want to retain people who are particularly enlisted who might go out to the commercial world now instead of staying in the Air Force. So we're going to give them a little more pay and a little more status, and we're going to let them do what they want to do. So hopefully that'll be helpful for retention. 